To a story you saw first on four, investigators are taking a closer look into the 2012 death of an inmate at the Erie County Holding Center. Richard Metcalf died shortly after he was taken into custody four years ago. His death was ruled a homicide, but the DA's office decided no charges would be filed. A new report from the state says Metcalf was severely beaten by county corrections officers. News 4's Dave Graber was first to bring us this story. Dave? Well, Nalina, last hour we told you about what led up to Richard Metcalf's brutal beating and death. According to a newly released state report, was caused by corrections officers at the Erie County Holding Center. We pick up the story now after the 35 year old is brought back to the holding center a second time from ECMC. And he's downtown for just hours before he's finally taken out by ambulance without a pulse. Richard Metcalf was combative and acting out for most of his short stay at the Erie County Holding Center when he was taken there in 2012 after an arrest on a burglary charge in Depew. But things grew far worse after he returned to the holding center later that night. The state report shows Metcalf begins having hallucinations. Officers say he's acting irrational in his cell, that he was biting and punching himself. He says he's radioactive and repeatedly yells the word slaughterhouse. After being restrained and shackled at the hands and ankles, Metcalf is bleeding and he begins to spit at officers. Minutes later, now in the infirmary, Metcalf continues to resist, despite four officers holding him down. Officers place a spit mask on Metcalf, and he eventually chews through it. An officer then grabs a pillowcase and ties it loosely over Metcalf's head. The beatings continue, according to the report. EMTs are summoned. Nearly 30 minutes after they're called, Richard Metcalf is lifted into the ambulance and turned onto his back for the first time since being ripped from his cell. An EMT reports finding the chewed through spit mask still tied around Metcalf's neck, so tight that it requires scissors to remove. Metcalf is no longer resisting, but he's also no longer breathing, and his heart has stopped. Emergency room doctors bring him back to life, and in addition to visible bruising all over his body, he has organ failure and four broken ribs. Metcalf never regains consciousness, and he dies two days later. State police were called to investigate by the Erie County District Attorney. Here's what they told News 4 in 2013. It was a lengthy investigation, very thoroughly investigated, and I can tell you at the end of this investigation, that we haven't found any wrongdoing on any person's part, whether it's the Pew Police Department or the Erie County Sheriff's Department. The state issued eight recommendations in September to the Sheriff's Office, including that it investigate the sergeant who violated the county policy for his dangerous use of a pillowcase around Metcalf's head, and that it investigate another sergeant for failing to properly supervise the staff during its use of force. The state recommends the county medical examiner correct its autopsy findings to reflect Metcalf's actual cause of death and that an independent review be conducted. And it says acting Erie County DA Michael Flaherty should conduct a full criminal investigation. Now, in addition to the sheriff's office disputing the details of that report and otherwise declining to comment, the county executive said the medical examiner's office would also not be changing its opinion, saying those opinions represent the certifier's medical expertise. And there was no new or additional information that was not available to the original certifier included in that new state report. So the cause of death listed on that death certificate will not be amended. Now, because so many agencies were implicated in the state report, we have comments from many people and agencies that weren't able to be shown on air. Head over to our website, WIVB.com, to see a full report that will be posted shortly. Live in the newsroom, Dave Graber, News 4 at 6.